public meeting, the regular meeting of the District of Chapman City Council. I would like to call to order the opening statement. As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalf. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, adoption of the agenda. I have some uh, <clears throat> late items for the agenda. I've got a CR3, Mayor's Report, and a, is that the DL4? Email from uh, Rob Brown, Managing Director, Dawson Creek. Um, here, dated August 1st, 2019, film project, uh, Sakanka. Any more new items for us to add to the agenda from counselors, staff? Okay, make that uh, motion to adopt the agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, favor? Carried. Uh, minutes from the meeting, July 15th, 2015. Move to adopt. Second. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Carry. Delegation. Jason Berlinger, Pine Valley Motocross. Welcome, Jason. Is it Jason? Afternoon, uh, Council, Mr. Mayor. There, uh, apologize. I had something a little more formal printed up, and I went to go print it off. I had the blue screen of death on my computer, so great timing. So last hour, I've been kind of trying to remember what I had written down there. So um, first off, my purpose here today is uh, we were founded in 2005, and it's my first time actually coming before Council. Um, uh, just more or less as a as it open the dialogue with let people know uh, we also we have a new or excuse me quite a few new counselors um, just so what we're about what the facility is about um, and just have a kind of a good uh, uh, rapport between it with each other so um, I'll just kick it off with an introduction for those that don't know I'm Jason Berlinger uh, pretty much lived here all my life um, I'm the president of Pine Valley Motocross Club um, since our inception in 2005 uh, I'm also the president, pres or present president of the Peace Motocross Association um, for the last two years. Um, that includes areas up as far north as Fort Nelson, uh, east as Peace River, and uh, hard, hard to believe that we're the furthest south. We don't say that very often in the chat. So. <laughs> um, but and, and points in between, um, you know, Dawson, Taylor, uh, Beaver Lodge. Um, so we usually have a 10 race series, and, and uh, so. Needless to say, I'm, I'm, I'm heavily involved in the sport of motocross. Um, I never started racing until actually I graduated, so I was late. Um, I was late coming to the, to the party, as they say. And uh, since it's ever it's stuck with me, I've always been involved in uh, sports growing up throughout school. And uh, I guess when school ended, that was just something that I remained to uh, keep doing. Um, even when I went to, to post-secondary and, and whatnot, it's just something that's always lived with me as well as uh, trickled down to my family. So um, my son ri or races and rides with me and, and my middle daughter, my youngest daughter could care less. She could play in the dirt, which is fine because it saves me some money there. So, um, Also, I'd want to, uh, I just want to recognize um, we couldn't have uh, got this off the ground without uh, Mr. Sowalski. Uh, yeah, sorry. He, don't he, don't he, be Jason. We uh, all feel the same way when we mention our uh, our uh, leader. 
So he was instrumental with going through the red tape. Um, I've known him, like I said, through high school and all that stuff. And he actually um, was a driving force. Uh, to When the other facility closed down in 2001, he, uh, he took on the red tape role. And you know, I was in my early 20s. I'd work, I could work 20 hours a day and before I wanted to do paperwork and deal with the bureaucratic side of things. So he really uh, stepped up to the plate and, and when I actually went to school and moved away to Grand Prairie to start my trade school and stuff, he kept with it and kept me in the loop. And uh, when I moved back uh, in 2003, um, or sorry, 2005, uh, I was back maybe two weeks and I got a phone call from him saying, hey, guess what? We got it. Three years down in the making, we got this land. And uh, so that was, and uh, that year we ha hardly had any snowfall. It was April 1st. I remember it. Um, we broke ground up there on April Fools. Who would have thought in Chetwin that we had no snow up there and we, and it worked out quite well. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to recognize him for uh, you know helping us with what we are today. Um, uh, I just let you guys know what our, our mandate is and, and what we is or what uh, our purpose is that we uh, um, created for ourselves and. That was just to provide a safe and controlled environment for the use of ATVs, not, not only just motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, as well as uh, um, we do training up there. We have various outside training courses that come in there and provide ATV and UTV training. It's, it's a work because we're fully insured and we have the facilities there to do so. Um, so that, that's our purpose, not just out in the bush somewhere trying to figure it out on your own. Um, uh, we had our first race in 2005, um, so the same year that we started breaking, we broke ground and actually our first, uh, our first gate drop, I invited our then mayor, Mr. Sogstad, and he um, helped perform the first gate drop with us, so um, big thanks to him. Uh, slowly we expanded every year, making improvements, um, just adding a little bit here, um, developing some more land there. Um, and also, uh, we are one of the first tracks. We call it a, a 50 track. So one of the it's a small little miniature track for all the little kids learning how to ride on your little four strokes and whatnot. And and uh, since uh, just about every track in our area now has one. So we were kind of a the breaking ground there with that. Um, also, we've had uh, for a few years we we teamed up with the Chetwin Mud Boggers, and we had a few years of. Uh, but my bugs, but that club has since been uh, kind of sitting idle until someone picks up the reins there. But um, we still been, they've still, a few of them have still been helping us on the motocross side. Um, our, our facility generates 100% of our income and covers our operating costs uh, all through um, hosting our one race a year. So um, the purpose of our facility wasn't a money making venture, it wasn't a, uh, or our club, um, it wasn't to, you know, have all these crazy things there. It was just fully to be here for the community, to have a place for kids to go, not to be banging up and down the ditch. And if they wanted to learn how to jump or, or use these things that we, we provided a place for them to do so. Um, so the, and with that being said, um, we don't, we're one of the very few, if not the only one left that does not, we do not charge for a membership up there. All we do is uh, uh, you just have to sign a liability waiver and you're free to go. When I say it doesn't cost anything, I mean that monetary. When I call looking for work to be done, it's a different story. Um, currently, our facility, as well as, as well as our club and our club members, um, mix all over the Peace Region, like I like I explained before. And one of, and actually, uh, a lot of our more dedicated members reside either in Hudson Hope and Tumbler Ridge, so they um, just kind of speak volume to what we have going on there. That those people are willing to travel. To, um, to you know, to be part of our club and enjoy what we have going on there. Um, the construction of the facility was it was funded uh, fully on the donations of our community, and I will harp on that night and day. Even on um, when Leo would bring up Chet TV, and we'd have our interviews up there. And, um, if you haven't seen it, it's on loop there on Chet TV. But, uh, you know, I really praise um, our, our small business sector and. Uh, you know, the days of, uh, um, you know, going to small businesses asking for help, um, those are not gone in Jetwind. We speak, I speak to other club executives in 
Dawson and Grand Prairie, and sure, you might think that you know their their uh, economy is a little more thriving and a little bigger center. Um, we by we by far and away have way more community support, and uh, that's not a knock on them. It's just more of a you know uplift our community uh, accolades to us. Um, our future, and I just wanted to speak to about our future plans. So um, our future plans are, are is uh, we, we're we're finished developing as far as our our footprint. Um, of course, we're going to carry on. We have an underground irrigation system for dust control, um, so we'll kind of pick away a clean up for, or clean away for that. We also constructed a uh, full on commercial uh, like playground grade uh, play ground up there uh, in accordance to ZSA or CSA standards. Um, so we, we were the only one that, uh, of, our, of our clubs, if not in BC and in Alberta, that have gone to that extra step to you know, make sure that we were, um, we just didn't have you know, a $500 playground when you had 50 kids crawling on it, it's gonna come out from under them or whatever. So we, you know, we spent the money, we fundraised, we saved up and we spent the money and we did it right fully fenced um, it, and we're going to plan plans are to improve on that um, eventually um, our plan is in case if you haven't known it or if you guys haven't known um, it was a 25 year lease and agreement with the with the crown um, uh, 24 25 year lease agreement and we're this will be in year we are on year 14 into year 15 so um, you know to look into the future whether um, we want to keep going year to year with that lease or if the municipality wants to um, go down the route of our club taking over the lease just so we don't get you know two or three years from the end of the lease and we're scrambling what to do and we have all that time and money and uh, invested up there and, and, and we're at a crossroads there so um, just a, kind of a long reaching future plans for that. Uh, also uh, we're going to be a little more uh, energetic and forceful I guess with uh, going after grants um, like I said earlier I could I used to be able to work all day all night and I didn't have a problem with it but it's catching up with me and with the young family and a lot of our racing endeavors and stuff like that so if we, there's opportunities to go after these grants whether it's the Northern Initiative Trust and and a PRD and stuff like that we're gonna try and take full advantage of that um, also I want to discuss some of our biggest hurdles um, up there uh, is a lot of it is actually we were surrounded by pine beetle kill so um, it took a lot of resources and a lot of time where we've had to um, dispose of that or take it down um, whether we assisted people looking for firewood or whatever it was just uh, just kind of we call it the safety trees essentially that we had to deal with so that took a lot of time from doing other things productive within our uh, facility so that's been a, that's been one of our uh, biggest drags on, on uh, manpower and, and, and time being spent up there. Um, in the last couple of years, probably four or five years, um, I know lots of clubs come and they ask the council for monetary donations and stuff like that, but instead of that, I figured our, um, I, I, I'd see a lot of value on both sides that we requested that assistance from summer students and things like that to help clean up the facility for our races and, that, and that's worked really well. In the last couple of years, um, or four or five years, you know, the summer students would come up for half a day, you know, four or five of them, and they'd help weed whack and just manicure the place, and uh, it looks absolutely amazing when people come up for our race, and that's one of the first things we get uh, commented on is just the upkeep and how things how things look. So, I'm really proud of that relationship that we built, and um, I think that just goes a lot more. That does a lot more for us than you know asking for five hundred dollars there or a thousand dollars there. I think that just that works well. So, um, and this year we're continuing on with that, so I just wanted to, th to thank you guys and uh, the municipality for that as well. Um, also, uh, I noticed that fancy motorcycle carving that's sitting out front there. So if you guys are running out of spots to place stuff, you know, we'll stick up our hand and, uh, you know, when the day comes and you want a home for it, by all means, we are more than willing to uh, take good care of it for you guys. Um, and closing, I just want to say thank you, you know, for your time, for allowing me to speak here uh, in front of you guys. Like I said, my purpose here was just to maybe inform, um, uh, inform some of you of what we have. If you hadn't, if you hadn't known, uh, actually a few years ago, I remember um, Mr. Fanner, he came up and 
he had some family that were using up there and he couldn't believe what we had going on up there and you know by then we were already running for 11 years 12 years so um, it is kind of a hidden little gem that way so um, uh, also I just wanted to say like our races are coming up August 24th 25th it's open invitation to to you guys if you guys want to come see um, we usually have about you know over 200 families that attend those races we have the biggest parking lot for our races um, in BC and we are full. Um, I take good pride that we have uh, the high, one of the highest attended races in Western Canada and um, I'm in the future I'd actually my future uh, plan for our facility is to hold the amateur national uh, finals or uh, amateur nationals in in our area so that's roughly about 500 families so um, that's my that's my goal for for our club and our facility and I think with our our town and the membership that we have I think we can buy more than enough pull it off and uh, I think it would do well for our community as well so if there's any questions or comments or anything like that I'm more than willing to answer them or um, anything like that or uh, I'd like to just thank you for that Jason and uh, some of the information that you've uh, given me is new and uh, what is old to me is that I seen the track my grandson uh, raced up there a few times when he was uh, younger so I know what you have down there and when you talk about a gem yes you do have uh, we do have one I guess I should say we because uh, as you being part of the community and the community riders that you guys uh, push forward is great so and uh, one more item you talked about the statue I believe or the carving it'll probably be placed in uh, up there this year uh, for for the race and then the council and uh, and the district will decide on on what future it holds so uh, but it will be there for the race I believe that uh, uh, one individual one of just a regular rider mentioned it to me so I brought it to uh, forth to to the council and to uh, staff so anyway we're uh, we're proud to uh, have that statue to the, the races this uh, this year. I'm I'm pretty impressed that uh, you guys are really doing something that the whole uh, whole BC and the piece and proudly doing it. That's another thing. So I'm glad you're doing that, Jason. And and the statue or the carving will be there. All right. Thank you. I just want to say I too have been up there, Jason. As in didn't go last year, but I went the year before, and I was impressed. I didn't know that we had that kind of facility here in town. So kudos, you guys have done an amazing job. Thank you. Are you related to all the Burlingers in town? What's, <laughs> what's the next question? <laughs> yeah. You mean they're, are they related to me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for all that. If there isn't any more questions, uh, good job. Even though the screen went blue on you, it, it might have been a good thing because off the cuff sometimes is, is the best presentation. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again next year or even before that. You bet. Yeah, like okay. I said, come on. Maybe, maybe a report on how, how it went would be great. <laughs> yeah. You bet. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, let's move on to, I don't see anything with the bylaws, and uh, committee reports, I, I've got a report, has, been, has it been distributed just today? Who's reading it? <laughs> So one of the things on my report, if, uh, did you, uh, did the media get one? No. Okay, good. Okay, on the, on the part about closures and stuff like that, uh, and what the mayor believes and what's perceived out there might be distorted, and uh, I, I have a strong, strong belief that we are our own vehicle and we should be traveling together on this and it, it doesn't really push that statement so far as to like I am British Columbian and I'm Canadian and I'm this and that and I believe that I could write more I'm not a great writer never 
never was. So uh, when I do put stuff, I try to put it from my heart. And I believe that when I just finished making a statement to Jason that sometimes it's better off the cuff. And sometimes it's not important on, on what's written down, but it, it's important on what you say as a person, as a, how, how you feel about things. And sometimes I don't put it down on paper and sometimes it might come out the wrong way. But in this, this instance, everybody should believe that we all are better people when we do work together. And uh, it hasn't really shown itself this year, as far as I'm concerned, about working together. So anyway, read my report. And if you have any questions, refer them to Carol. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, is there any, any reports that we missed, Carol? Yes. Can we? Motion to receive for information. Sorry. Okay. No. Good. It's just information, eh? We're not uh, voting on it because you're just receiving. Okay. Thank you. Items. Letter of support. I'll make the recommendation that council authorize the letter to be sent to the Minister of Education, the Premier, and MLA Mike Bernier in support of City of Victoria's request to restore provincial support for libraries. I would second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, discussion. Mel? Okay. Um, it's it says in here it was um, they've been frozen since two thousand and nine. Fun the funding to for libraries has been frozen since two thousand and nine. Any more fund discussions, isn't it? Yeah. Pardon me? The, that's just the funding rates though, right? They've still been getting funding, haven't they? I don't believe so. Do we have clarification, uh, staff, on uh, just, what just what they wrote? Just, I'm just that's all we got? Okay. Any more uh, discussion on this? Okay. Then the letter of support. Done? That the council authorize a letter to send to the Minister of Education and the Premier, the Premier and the MLA Mike Bernier in support of the City of Victoria request to restore provincial support for the library. Libraries. Okay. Done. We're sending. Okay. You vote. All those in favor? Gary? I wasn't. Nope. Sometimes he needs help. All right. Natural resource form. <clears throat> Registration information. I'll make the recommendation that council authorize all members of council to attend the BC Natural Resources Forum in Prince George, BC, January 28th through 30th, 2020. Seconder. Seconder. I'll second it. Laura? Any discussion? No, I'm, uh, I know quite a few of you guys went last year, but how did you find it? It was quite important. Yeah, I thought it was too. I, yeah, think, it's just, I think it's just a really great forum to yeah. go to. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Okay. Deal three. Letter from the South Peace Health Service Society dated August 16th. Support for rural dividend funding grant. I would make that motion that the uh, District of Chetwynd 
authorizes the submission of an application to the BC Rural Dividend Program for the Boultrees Community House Project and that Council support this project through its duration. Further, that the District of Chelton will provide SPHSS with 15 hours of administrative uh, administration assistance, assistant time to prepare engagement leaflets and information to our community, a letter of support which clarifies the support being given by the District of Chetwin and the resolution of Council approving the support. Discussion? No. Staff? Um, they're just asking for a letter of support and for some ad assistant, admin assistant support, but they're actually putting in the application. Oh, okay. When you say administration support, like what, what does that look like? Like who are they looking at for? They're just asking for somebody to help them put together some leaflets, oh, okay. so about two days worth of time. Oh, okay. And uh, you'll be uh, looking out after that if we pass this. And okay, any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Okay, correspondence. Uh, is there anything that here in the correspondence that? Any of the councillors see that we need to discuss? C1. C1. Okay. Um, C5. C1 and C5. And any further items? Okay, good. We will discuss the letter. Letter for from the Chetwin Chamber of Commerce meeting Minister Donaldson and the Caribou Recovery. Uh, yes, thanks, Please. Your Worship. I'd like to publicly thank the Chamber of Com uh, Commerce for going down to Victoria to to represent our interests. Um, I think it's fantastic and. I know from personal experience that these aren't fun trips. You see very little other than the inside of a airplane and a taxi cab and a hotel room and, and some meeting room, which looks the same like it does everywhere else. And it's, it's my own personal opinion coming back from these things has been a kind of a kick to the gut. So I'm not sure what their experience was, but I, I do want to thank them for that. Um, Carol, can I just have some clarification? We have asked for meetings with Minister Donaldson, right? And been denied? Uh, earlier on in the yeah last fall we did yeah we asked for several meetings yeah. so although I'm very thankful for the chamber going and representing us it, it is a little bit disheartening that he won't meet with us uh, as local government as elected officials of of the people that this is going to hurt um, this this states to me that it's a, a clear communication from our provincial government that local government is being purposely excluded from this entire process and there is a very few number of people at the table making very large decisions that's going to have huge impacts on the large majority of the population in the region and I think that this is very unacceptable and to be honest I don't know what to do about it I don't know what else to do other than what we've already done and we're just being pushed away and the doors closed in our face and I'd kind of like to open up a discussion to, to discuss the next steps. Um, I think that we're all pretty hopeful with the uh, appointment of Mr. Lextrom, and he wrote up, a, a, to what I feel, a very accurate and, and comprehensive report, and it seems to be falling on deaf ears now. Um, in fact, I just read a letter today sent to the Premier from the Northeast Stakeholders Group, which I, Carol, I don't even know if it's wise to quote anything in this letter or because it is fairly hearsay, but if it's in a letter, am I okay to, to reference something in it? Well, it was even said in this letter that our own Minister of Environment has contacted um, West Moberly First Nations and Soto First Nations and basically told them, don't worry, the agreement's gonna go through as planned. The province isn't gonna back down from that. So what was the purpose? Ideas? Any counselors? 
Michelle? I, I certainly don't have any answers, but I think we still need to, and, and we do, we're working well with the regional district, and I think that helps, but as, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the next step is. Well, thankfully, we've got the groups like the chamber that are, that's going, they, they somehow got the ear of a, of a minister, and, and thanks to them for, for having, um, having the vision to, to go and talk, and, and hopefully it helped. And I don't know, that just, that struck me as we, we get rejected and, and other people are being listened to. So it's not that they're not going to talk about the issue, they're just not going to talk to us about the issue. And uh, we got to keep trying. We're elected by our community, so we have to keep fighting for them. Councillor. Staff. We haven't yet been told, but we were assured that we'd know by mid-August, so we should hear soon. Any more comment? Yeah, I just have to, I, I agree 100%. Okay, it seems like it's just kind of quiet, like you haven't heard much about what's going on. There did a great report on that too, but now I understand that they hired another person to do more reports, and I'm not sure what that is going to go like I don't get it. But, yeah. One more Clay? That's it? You got one more? Well I could go on forever. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> well my my opinion on uh, how letters and perceived about my my word probably today is perception and it sounds like it and because it is perception of what we're doing and how we're doing it and i believe what clay's telling us we're doing a good job at what we what we're doing because they won't they won't talk to us because we have valid points and that's what he's telling telling me here today and this perception of us not being able to talk to them and uh, get meetings is telling me that we've done something right here. We've done something right, right as a community and as uh, councillors and uh, mayor, we've been doing something right. And if they're not going to talk to us because we have a great opinion and our great opinion means that we are doing something good for our community, which we want the surrounding area to know that what is good for Chetwin is good for the surrounding area. And I believe that we are the vocal point and we always will be. And when they don't talk to us, that means that they are telling us, we really value your opinion, but we're not going to listen to you because you got great opinions. And for them to say, well, if it's a slap in the face and uh, it is, and uh, I have uh, Dan Rose, I sit beside in the Peace River Regional District that goes to bat for us, and he has a great opinion about how things are going in the democratic uh, uh, venue in the public's uh, eye. So he is great for us, and uh, Clay, I believe, Councillor, uh, that we are doing something, and if they give us the proper uh, engagement, we will have we will have the same same opinion, great opinions and great value in those opinions, and they are such great uh, uh, standings that we will always have the great values of that. Clay, so, yeah, I like to thank you too for for standing up and making making yourself uh, visible and and known. Uh, one more. Here we go. Thank you, Clay. You knew I had one more. Yep. <laughs> um, and you may or may not be right, Your Worship. Uh, the fact of the matter is our opinion may or may not be right. We have an opinion. We have a side of the story to tell, just as everybody else has a side of the story to tell. And, and it's up to the decision makers in Victoria to, to take all these facts and decisions from scientists, from communities, from industry, from First Nations, from everybody, and make a decision that's going to be right. The thing of it is, is that the process is broken because nobody's asked us, and, and that's what we're upset about. We don't even have a chance to be heard on whether we're right or wrong because nobody will talk to us, and that's the, the process is, is broken as far as I can tell. Any more? Okay. Yes. I kind of have a thought here. Yep. So, you're right, Clay. We don't know if we're on the right path. Nobody's told us. So why can't we, let's market ourselves. 
let's hire a marketing company and get Chapman on the face of the map and show people down south exactly what our community is all about. Not the politician's perspective, but the people who actually live here. Is that a viable something? Any more? That, that'll be another day. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. It's an option. It is. It is. Very. Okay. With that, we will close that part for now. It'll always be there <laughs> until we get it done. <laughs> okay. C5. Uh, I'm just, I, I brought this forward. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering um, um, I, if we can get this on our Facebook page. Um, this was brought to my attention on Facebook that Chevron was the only community on here that wasn't on the original letter, and I'm not quite sure why, but um, and I was asked about that and I couldn't answer it. So I'm glad to see that we actually did a letter um, to put there, but I think if we could get that on our Facebook page so people are aware that we did it, yeah, that's cool. and I'm glad we did it. In this case, Laura, it was the mayor that uh, didn't send the information to uh, our staff. I got it and I didn't forward it to, uh, to our staff, so this is on the mayor's uh, Mayor's bad in this case, so just by not sending it to our staff. And uh, Carol, uh, we got the letter. As soon as we found out that we weren't part of the signature of this uh, letter, we, we went out and did one right away. Thank you for that. Okay, any more discussion on the letter? Uh, there's some huge numbers that they present to us on, on the closures and stuff that happened in the forest industry. So if uh, anybody wants to find them, they'll be able to find them on our uh, agendas because they did give us uh, quite a few numbers on the closures of some, uh, some communities are going to be devastated in the fact that some, that's the only, only industry in town. So <clears throat> they are uh, gonna suffer. With that, any more uh, opinions on our forest industry letter? Good. Okay. So would you like me to make a recommendation to accept yes. it? Yes. Yes, please. I'll make a recommendation that we, I don't know what you call it. Except for, yeah, one is. Yeah. One is yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then just a side note, we've never did the I-4. Oh. This one. Yeah. I would second your motion, by the way. Thank you. Okay, well, let's deal with the motion and then we'll go back to D4, uh, right? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, carry. Okay, which one is... Uh So he's contacted us about this uh, letter, this Rob Brown, Managing Editor, Dawson Peak Mirror. Uh, he's uh, talking about a subject, is a film called the Sakanka. It's a northeast, uh, what do you call it? And uh, what he put here is, Alan, would you, would you sit down with, uh, we'd love to sit down with you out in Chetwin or in Dawson Creek if it happens to be up. up to talk about exciting film project I'm uh, working on in the region uh, to showcase the region in a unique economic developed I think diverse and tourism way so he's uh, proposing that he wants our support of a letter or of, of some kind of funding so he just give it to us and uh, according to him it's 
it's going to take probably from one year to about three to get this uh, rolling. But he wants to put it out there for us to mull it over. Uh, I know we're going to be part of it regardless because we're in the area and they're going to do a little bit of interviews with people that have been in the area for a long time just to get a background of what's going on, what's been going on in the past and, uh, and what's probably going to do, be going on in the future. So it, it's kind of like wh what he tells me is that he's uh, looking forward to having uh, the film festivals that they have. He says it's one of those kind of films that he wants to produce. And he, he uh, said, which Blair project? I go, Arden? <laughs> so anyway, it was something like that. He says, not like that, but that's the kind of film it's going to be. It's going to be something that will have a little story behind it and yet uh, showcase some of the peace area. And that's why it's called Sakanka. Uh, do you have any anything that we could ask? I, I just think it's... Tell, sir? The, was probably pointed out by Jocelyn because I really didn't read this, but when it's got on the back all about the film, like the story concerns mm -hmm. a bear expert <laughs> and hunter team to deal with a bear frenzy as tourist season begins in the city. I don't know, it just, it's, it just sounds like... Like the Blair Witch Project? Oh, like it's <laughs> going to be right out there, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what to get make of this, I really yeah. don't. I'd like to make a recommendation also I would second that. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, received. Okay, back to uh, the C, yeah. one, one. I'll make a recommendation that we receive for information. Okay, favor, any discussion? Favor, okay, carry. Okay, let's, uh, opportunity for public input, uh, reports for action. We've got a development uh, variance, variance permit application. Dan Woloski. Development variance permit number 01-219. Uh, 4001 52nd Avenue, Dan Spolosky, public consultation. I don't see any public, so we're good with that. Right? They don't have to read it. Want me to read this? Oh, yeah, I'll read it. <clears throat> this portion of the regular council meeting is set aside to allow the public comment on the proposed development vari variance permit number 01-2019-4001 52nd Avenue, Dan Spolosky. Uh, this is not a formal public hearing process, but rather an informal process. I, I will, however, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their name and resident or business address, and then provide council with comment. I will now ask if there's any pre any presentations either in favor or in opposition to the proposed permit. Not hearing any, I com comments, no comments. I declare the public proceeding concluded. Thank you. Do we need a motion for this to... Uh, yeah. I 
I'll make the recommendation that pursuant to section 498 of the local government act RS 2015 council authorizes issuance of development variance permit number 1 2019 to vary zoning bylaw 1035 2016 to permit an accessory building to be constructed three feet from the rear property line instead of five feet at 4001 52nd Avenue Northeast. Any discussion? I just have a question that maybe this is something that we should go back and look at our bylaws and changing or updating our bylaws so it we don't have to bring this up again or if it's we can have a discussion down the road about the bylaw. Staff. We actually our um, zoning bylaw and OCP are slated to be updated the local government act suggests that we look at it periodically so we're actually going to do that that would be a good discussion to have during that process thank you carol If I, could, yeah. if I could just mention that in the report, um, I said that the applicant intends to add three truck parking spaces. However, they've since withdrawn that. No truck parking spaces. Okay, we're clear. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I'll make that right. I guess I, before I make this recommendation, I have a question. Um, did it skip, did I, maybe I missed it. Like, did, usually, like, we have talked about, like, the last permit, we had a meeting saying, okay, let's forward it to a public hearing, but we didn't do that on this one? Yeah, it's a different tool. The de okay. development permit process is just for council, whereas the one that we just considered the oh, development okay. variance permit is a, it's a public process. But gotcha. the, the property is already zoned correctly for this use, so because it's in a development permit area, that's why it came before council for this. Gotcha. Thank you, Carol. Okay, so I'll make that recommendation. Now, the council approved the insurance of development permit 03 2019 to EXP Services Inc. for the construction of a car wash building in a small addition to the convenience store at 5001 and 5009 South Access Roads, subject to Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure approval. Discussion. Oh, I think it's, um, I, I, I think seeing. Construction is going to be awesome for Chelan. Any more discussion? There was just one one item that uh, it was to do with the take care next door or the KC Center next door with Chelan, but uh, with the noise and that, so it was just one thing that was brought up. So uh, they were talked to, you and they said, "Oh no, we we make." Uh, and maybe it does the problem, but it's going to be paid. So that issue goes away with, with the paving. Okay. So, and with the traffic, and I believe it will be fine. If they worry about traffic, 7-Eleven is a pretty high, high volume area anyway, and they seem to manage that. So I believe it might have been a dust that they might be worried about that. I believe that the uh, paving will be all right. Anything to add that stuff? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Carry on. RA3. 
I would make that motion that the property tax report dated July 30th, 2019 be received for information. say 94.07 collection so that means we still have like six percent of people that haven't paid taxes correct okay any more questions or discussion Make that recommendation that the investment policy be adopted. I'll second that. <clears throat> second it in the uh, discussion. Uh, can we get the Coles Notes version of it? It's more or less formalizing what we do now already. Uh, it's one of the things that's falling in under the best practices from the associations that I'm part of, so this is just something I thought we put forward. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, I did, um, and I, I think I've seen it in here somewhere. So these, you, under the authorizations and suitable investments, um, all the investments that we will be looking at doing will be through the MFA, right? Most of the, like, except for what well, I guess savings in the bank account would be and we may look at um, other charter banks or credit union if they try, if they're willing to offer us products that give us a better rate of return and that kind of thing. But all the ones that we'll be looking at are all acceptable under the community charter. Right. Because I mean, with the way the, way the world is going now, yeah, I mean, we don't want to be tying up a lot of people's money. And no, and the, the community charter is pretty restrictive as to what we're allowed to do okay. because we are dealing with taxpayer dollars. So. Any more discussion or questions for okay, all those maybe. Okay. Okay. Eleven. Reports for information. This is another money one. I would make the motion that the financial statement statements for the period ending July 31st, 2019 be received for information. Is there any new business? None? Okay, at this time, is there any uh, questions from the public? I'm glad we're doing a good job, public. Thank you for attending. Okay, number 14. So Jern. Hey, thank you.
oh my goodness, it was on the backs of paper bags, it was on scrap pieces of paper, this and that. So uh, I typed it up, I edited it, sent it to publishers, and the, they turned it down saying, there's more, there is more. What happened after the dam was built? important thing for us is for kids to feel excited about science, to feel like it's accessible, it's fun and it's exciting, and that it's not something that you only do in the science lab once a week with one specific teacher. It's something that you do in everyday life with objects around you, uh, and it's something that is fun and inclusive and exciting and, and brings joy. 